Hello everyone. This video lesson is to show you how to do a spatial relationship diagram for your Lake Meyer Cottage final culminating activity. This will be phase one of a three phase project that will take us to the end of the semester. A spatial relationship diagram or a bubble diagram takes the program or the rooms required in the particular building and it arranges them in a way uh, based on their relationships to one another. If you walk around your home, um, you notice that certain spaces are located near other spaces based on the function of uh, each one of those spaces in your home. And it's the same thing with this cottage design. We have a cottage that will be holding eight students at uh, one time. And we wanna make sure that the building in terms of its function flows properly to allow those users to use the space in, its, in the best way uh, possible. So to create a um, spatial relationship diagram, uh, first let me talk about the various symbols that we use uh, for a spatial relationship diagram. And again, uh, I can start with, I have if I have a bubble and another bubble beside it with a line, okay? This particular symbol here means that I have two spaces with a relationship, direct relationship, uh, that they're adjacent to one another, but they're separated in some way, whether it be a wall or they're separated by a door. Um, so there again, there's some relationship between those spaces, um, but they are uh, you know, separated by a barrier of some sort. The next relationship is when we have two bubbles that overlap. When we have two bubbles that overlap, this indicates to me that your intent or the intent of the designer is to have those two spaces um, sharing in a common space, an open space. So that's more of an open concept design. Often you see that in uh, today's architecture with houses where you have open great rooms, living rooms to kitchens, um, kind of all sharing one large space. And the other relationship that we have is we have a bubble and then a bubble within a bubble. Okay. And what that tells me is that we have a particular element or a space, um, you know, found within that space. Um, this could be either say a closet and this is more for elements, um, not so much for spaces. But say we have like a linen closet and you want that closet to be within the space and not its own separate um, room, then that is how you would uh, organize that in terms of that diagram. So again, we have our um, adjacent spaces here, okay? We're joined in some way. And then we have this one here where we have open or shared spaces. And then this one here, we have either a space or an element within the space. Okay. So when you're doing your diagram, I'm going to be looking for these particular um, symbols or relationships between your spaces when you're uh, when you're doing that. So in this particular cottage, we want to think about okay, what are the main spaces, and then what are some of the um, other details or spaces that we want to work around. Um, we know in our particular room list that I've provided for you um, that we have a great room, okay? The great room tends to be kind of the main, obviously focal point or gathering space of the cottage. You could decide that as part of the great room that, you know, you might wanna have say the dining space um, in close proximity to that. So if I wanted to do the dining room in close proximity, what then I would do is I would have my dining room and then I'd have that close proximity or connection there. If for whatever reason though I wanted to have the dining room as part of one big open space with the great room, then what I would do is I'd overlap 
my particular bubbles and I'd write my dining room in for there. And then I have my kitchen. Now we all know that, you know, our kitchen has a direct relationship to a dining room, for instance. So I wouldn't put my kitchen on the other side of the great room, for instance. So I wouldn't put it over here, right? And then have to walk through my great room to get to my dining room to either serve food or sit down and eat. So logically, and again, in, in most houses, we have a direct relationship between the kitchen and the dining room. So what we would do is we would, again, we'd either have this relationship here with our kitchen, with our dining room, or again, if we want to have one big open space that includes great room, dining room, and kitchen, then we would go with the overlapping. So these are the three main components of our cottage, the great room, dining room, and kitchen. And again, depending on your design rationale and, and how you want this thing to lay out, um, you'd either have, again, an open space that incorporates all three of these items, or you'd have the great room, dining room, kitchen, and separated in some way. Now, when we say separated, it doesn't mean it ha necessarily has to be a wall. We could do half walls where, again, there, there's a wall that defines the spaces, but doesn't necessarily cut off the space. Um, we can put um, columns and things to separate the spaces. So it provides a visual separation from space to space, but doesn't put a wall that closes the spaces in. Uh, and again, you could have a walkthrough archway. You could have a door if you wanted. Um, but anyways, that relationship with the connected um, can be envisioned in many different ways. Then in our particular um, cottage, we have two bedrooms, okay? And again, this is a cottage that'll have eight students in it at any given time. Um, you know, some are gonna be up later in the great room hanging out. Well, I don't necessarily want to have my bedrooms in a direct relationship with the great room. So I might want those to be kind of somewhere else away, uh, separated by other spaces. Um, so what we would do here is we'd have bed number one and then bed number two in our diagram, okay? And again, we don't have to have um, them separated. And, and in this case, we want the bedrooms obviously to be separate spaces, but we probably want them to be in some close proximity to one another. Uh, I wouldn't put one bedroom on one side of the building and another bedroom on the other side of the building, although you may want to do that. And then we have our walk-in closets. Okay, so each bedroom has to have a walk-in closet. So we have a WIC and a WIC, which stands for walk-in closet. And again, we have this relationship. Okay. We have a bathroom and it says in the bathroom that it has to have uh, two sinks, a toilet and a shower. We don't really want to have to worry about the fixtures in our uh, spatial relationship diagram. We're just dealing with the actual spaces. Makes most sense uh, and you'll notice it in your homes. Um, if your bedrooms are upstairs, you generally have a bathroom upstairs and that bathroom is usually uh, kind of in a central location so that all of the bedrooms uh, have quick, uh, immediate access to that bathroom. So in this particular case, I would have a situation where, you know, if I'm designing this, I'm going to have my bathroom that sits right between the two bedrooms. And again, they have a relationship with both bedrooms, okay? And again, this wouldn't be an open concept. We wouldn't have an open bath. Uh, there are, we want some privacy in our bathroom. Um, so that is the kind of relationship that we would have with those uh, particular spaces. We can show some, uh, some circulation spaces, so hallways. Um, so maybe we wanna have some sort of hallway. That separates those 
bedroom spaces away from the more of the entertaining dining areas. And we also have a requirement for an entry foyer. So again, depending on where you want this entry to be, and again, it's up to you, uh, but say, okay, here's my entry. And it says on that entry foyer that we also have to have a closet for that uh, foyer. So again, attached to that foyer will be a closet. And again, that entry foyer might have a relationship with the hallway and with the great room. And again, the whole layout and how this uh, diagram develops itself uh, may change. You might do uh, three or four different versions of a diagram until you kind of get it settled the way you want it to be settled. Um, there is no right or wrong uh, way to go about doing this bubble diagram. And again, the whole key, and we'll get to it in a minute, uh, of how this helps you start to develop your actual floor plan. And the last couple things that I'd like you to show on your diagram. Um, for one, we do have a relationship uh, with Lake Meyer. So we have the lake. Right? So we have this lake here. Okay, and it says that the great room must have a view of the lake, okay? So we're going to have a relationship between the great room and the lake, okay? We have to have that relationship. We are also uh, asked to provide a deck, okay? And again, the deck could wrap around Okay, and again, you could have a relationship where the kitchen has access to the deck, the dining room has access to the deck, the great room has access to the deck. Maybe this wraps all the way around where the entry foyer also has an access to the, to the deck as well, okay? And we have two elements that are also important. So on the bathroom, we are required to have a linen closet, okay? So I could either have a linen closet as its own little closet with a direct relationship to the bathroom, or that linen could also find itself as something that's within our bathroom. So it could be a linen cabinet of some sort, um, but I'll be looking for in your overall schematic uh, that you do have a linen noted some way uh, with a relationship with the bathroom. And in the great room, we've been asked to provide yourself with a fireplace okay so again that fireplace could be within the great room and that's how you're going to show it that way so what i've developed here essentially is a real quick spatial relationship diagram and again this is what you'll be required to do for me for your uh, first phase of your final culminating and it's really as simple as that and what you'll see here is when you look at this bubble diagram, okay, the main importance of it really is you take the program, the architectural program, or the room spaces required for this particular project, okay, and you organize it on paper, and it helps you to not forget a space within your design. So if I review your space relationship diagrams, I may notice that, oops, you forgot the linen closet or you forgot the closet for the entry foyer. What you don't wanna do is go through the entire design process, get your rough floor plans and everything figured out, and then realize, oops, I forgot to put a space in and now I have to kind of redesign this whole thing all over again to incorporate that one little space that we should have caught in the beginning in our space relationship diagram. You'll notice that uh, eventually, you know, this will then start to take its form as a building, right? So, and again, like we got a bunch of bubbles here. We know that many spaces, you know, lend themselves, especially with dining rooms and kitchens, lend themselves best if they're obviously rectangular in shape. Um, but who's to say, you know, that this doesn't start to form, you know, 
and maybe this front grate room here has kind of a rounded front wall on it, right? And then it kind of leads over here. So as I kind of go around, it starts to form an overall footprint of my particular building. And then from there, what I'll do is I'll go and in individually in each space, start to lay out and develop those particular spaces uh, to accommodate furniture and people and circulation. Uh, part of this project is that you'll be required to make sure that this is uh, barrier free. So what that means is that uh, someone in a wheelchair or with physical disabilities will be able to use the space. Uh, we'll get into that later in another phase of this particular uh, project. Um, but for phase one, obviously, I'd like you to generate uh, for me eventually a final spatial relationship diagram that incorporates all of the spaces that have been outlined for you uh, in the project outline. Uh, and you'll be submitting that uh, to a Dropbox uh, on D2L for me, uh, for me to review. And again, this is uh, part one of a three phase uh, final culminating. Um, obviously with the COVID-19 shutdown with school, um, this is not it's going to be revised somewhat. Obviously, we're not going to be doing a final computer-generated design of this uh, cottage this year. But I did want to get you going with some architectural work and uh, thinking about how to uh, plan things. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, start with a spatial relationship diagram. Then what you're going to do is you're going to, in phase two, uh, you're going to develop the spaces um, from this diagram, uh, each individual space and come up with a uh, rough design of those spaces and bring it all together um, into a final uh, preliminary uh, floor plan layout. So phase three will be the actual cottage design, uh, the floor plan of the cottage. Uh, we're not gonna get into any elevations or anything like that. Um, all I wanna do is uh, make sure that you have a really nice clean uh, floor plan of the cottage, your concept, uh, complete with all the spaces and um, again these will have to meet the building code with respect to uh, spatial planning for someone in a wheelchair. So give it some thought like I said the first thing uh, we'll do is we'll just uh, talk about uh, the spatial relationship diagram in phase one and then I'll do another quick little lesson as we start developing uh, the spaces for the cottage. That is all. So if you have any questions, uh, make sure you reach out to me through D2L or email um, as you're working through this. But again, it's pretty straightforward. And again, always just remember, uh, we'll come back to, you know, these particular relationships. So the line between two spaces uh, shows that uh, the space have a direct relationship with one another and uh, should be adjacent to one another. Uh, when you have two uh, bubbles where they overlap or intersect that shows that we have an, a shared space or an open space that we'd like to have. And then when you have a uh, bubble within a bubble, that means we have either a space or an element um, that is found within the space, um, not separated by any walls or overlapping or anything. So, in, you know, like I said, in the case of the linen closet, um, could be a cabinet. So then we'd have a bubble within a Bible bubble showing the cabinet for that uh, particular requirement or the great room with the fireplace. Uh, other than that, uh, that's all for now. Take care.